Hello! Welcome to my channel, Edible Thoughts Makes. My name is Stephanie and this channel is where I share with you my works in progress, finished projects, things I'm cooking up, books I'm reading, funny things my kids may say. My hope is that as you watch this episode and the previous episodes that you find some inspiration along the way. This is episode 118. We are at the very end of November year 2023. A big warm welcome to everybody joining me here in this creative space today. It is a blustery, freezing, cold day here in Minnesota where I live with my husband and our two young children. It was below zero with the wind this morning and yeah, very chilly. So everybody had to get all bundled up and the winter gear had to be packed for the kids for school and there's not a lot of snow on the ground anymore. It did snow over the weekend, but a lot of it melted when the sun came out. There are still patches of areas that have um, snow covered, but the roads have been fine and it wasn't, it wasn't very much. It was maybe an inch at most. So I'm ready for more snow. I feel like if it's going to be cold, it just better snow <laughs> because it's just much more pleasant that way. It's prettier it's less gray and there's just something about waking up to a fresh blanket of sparkling snow that is just so magical even if i have to shovel even if i have to shovel but yes we are entering that magical season of sparkling snow and even when it's bitter cold if there is snow it is it is just that much better. I love all the seasons. If you are new here, I am a very seasonal person in the sense that the things I make are very much inspired by nature and the seasons and what is going on in my life at the time. And I feel like we stitch our memories and our intentions into all of our makes and whether or not that is consciously or subconsciously, but I feel like that, that enters at least all the projects that I make there's a lot of intention behind them. I have quite an episode for you here today. It has been about two weeks and there is so much 
to share with you. Not only have I finished some items, but I have started many, many items. And yeah, just a lot has gone on in the last two weeks. Maybe you should back up a little bit. So if you are new here, the way I organize my episodes is that I start out with a little vlog, which is like a video montage of various scenes throughout my life since the last time I recorded. And then we go into an intro and welcome session. I section, not session, well, kind of a session. And we talk about the weather because like I said, I'm a very seasonal person and I'm from Minnesota and people in Minnesota like to talk about the weather. <laughs> so yes. We talk about the weather. If it is gardening season, there's usually a garden update. It is no longer gardening season, so there's no garden update. And there won't be for some time until probably May. Then we go into a finished projects section and then works in progress and then eats and reads and then sometimes a food for thought section. I did jot down some notes for food for thought this time, but because I have this multitude of things to talk about, I may or may not get to that part. If you've been around for a while, you know I also have these other little like short videos that I aim for less than 30 minutes called Maker Musings. And sometimes those are things that just don't quite fit into a larger episode or they are these other like floaty thoughts that I have managed to put into some sort of cohesive manner and I like them to be more casual where I can knit or crochet at the same time as I'm talking to you so I don't want them to be with things that I have to edit a ton or prepare a lot of research or anything like that so like the title suggests their musings so floaty thoughts and yeah so sometimes I have those so sometimes I feel like food for thought ends up meshing into those if it ends up being something I want to talk about more but otherwise that section tends to be a little bit smaller and sometimes I just run out of energy by the time I get there so we just skip it but yes, so that's sometimes there, sometimes not. And yeah, I think that's like the general uh, formatting of how I do these videos. I do include closed captioning for all of my videos. You'll click on that CC button. If I speak too fast or too slow for your preferences, YouTube allows you to change the speed. I include links to the things that I talk about in the description box below this video. You might have to click on show more. I do recommend you check that section out before you ask questions about where you can find something because I do work hard to try to provide all of that information there so that you can go find what you need. But I am human, not a robot, and so sometimes I do forget things. So if you don't see it there, do feel free to ask in the comments and either I can answer it or maybe somebody else reading the comment can answer it for you. I do use Ravelry project pages. I do use Ravelry for all of my projects and so there are project pages there for all crochet and knit items. Sewn items are not in there because it's not set up for that. Um, yeah, and I usually link those separately from like the, the websites for designers and makers and things like that. And I do try to discuss majority if not all or more of the details for the projects here on YouTube as another way to learn and share information. So I mentioned a lot has happened in the last two weeks, one being something I am very proud of. So I will preface it by saying I am not a runner. Definitely not a runner with a capital R. I, I won't say I detest running, but it's not like my first choice of physical activity. I can walk, I can hike, I'm okay with that, but running for whatever reason just uses muscles differently. And what I'm proud of is that I ran a 5K. That is 3.1 miles. And with the wind chill, it was 14 degrees Fahrenheit that day. And it was so cold, but I did it. My husband has run a few 5Ks and 10Ks and he asked if I wanted to run this one with him. And I said, yeah, sure, it'll be fun. So, I mean, I kind of trained, meaning I just like made myself do like fast walking sessions with some running interspersed in between. But when it came down to it that morning, it was so cold. I actually did run, I would say 99% of it because it was so cold, you couldn't really stop and then like keep going. Because once you stopped, your muscles would all freeze and tense up that it actually like hurt to get going again. So yes, I ran the whole thing at an average of like an 11 minute mile and I'm very proud of myself. So I did it and I will say it was actually kind of fun. I may or may not do another one. 
I may or may not choose it to be during a warmer season, but it was really fun. And actually I feel like it was almost in some ways easier to run with it being cold than with it being hot. I'm not for sure because I obviously haven't run a 5K when it's hot, but I did run uh, like a family fun run mile in, was it September or October? And it was like super hot that day. And I, I don't know, that one almost felt harder to run just the one mile at like high humidity, high temp than it was to do this 3.1 miles freezing. <laughs> I don't know, but I did it, I'm very proud of myself. So aside from running, there's been a ton of cooking and baking. I didn't put a lot of it in this front vlog section because I figured I would use it in my eat and read section and I'll just like have it play while I'm talking. That way you have the visual going on at the same time. We have several finished projects to share with you today. Some of them are knit and some of them are sewn. I'm going to start with the knit ones because I'm wearing a ton of them. <laughs> and I am not too warm right now, but eventually some of this may come off, we'll see. The first one I want to share with you today is this hat that I am wearing. This is the classic ribbed hat. It is a free pattern on Pearl Soho's website, and I used the recommended yarn for the pattern. This is Pearl Soho's Cashmere Merino Bloom Base. It is 75% extra fine merino, 25% cashmere. It is a super soft, luxurious base. I knit a hat out of the Fresh Fig colorway for my mom for Christmas, and I already gave it to her because we don't usually see my parents during Christmas and she wore it to our house um, for dinner the other day and she said she loves it, it is not itchy at all. I had her try on a previous hat that I had knit before last winter and she said it was itching her on the forehead and so I said, okay, um, I will look for a yarn that hopefully will not have any itch factor to it and so I figured this base was a perfect one for her and she says there is zero itch and it is lightweight enough for her to wear when she gets up in the middle of the night and she just needs something on her head so she'll wear it even in the house. So she loves it and I'm so happy that she does because I love it too. Mine is knit in red poppy and it is this beautiful bright vibrant orange leaning red. I have always wanted a red hat. I don't think I've ever had a red hat and I just really wanted one. And I was hurrying to finish this one when we went to go cut down our Christmas tree at the tree farm because I felt like it was super festive. And I also was hurrying to finish it before I was running the 5K because I knew it was going to be super cold that morning and I wanted to wear it over a baseball cap. So I had on my baseball cap in order to get my hair out of my face and then I put my hat, this hat on, on top of that baseball cap and had my ponytail kind of just tucked in. It was perfect. It was so nice because my ears stayed warm since I knit an extra long length so that the brim can keep my ears warm and it was just nice and cozy and it wasn't too hot and I'm not sure how I could have been too hot when it was that cold out but it was perfect. So I was hurrying to finish it for that. I wanted a bright red hat that in case I like fell over or something that my husband could find me in the sea of like 5,000 plus people. But I did not fall down, I did not get lost, everything was just fine and the hat was nice and warm and cozy for the run and now I will have it forever and I just love it. I used um, 100 grams for my hat which gave me I think like four or five grams remaining which I want to use in another hat that I'm going to make with some striping. The needle size recommended is a US 3 or 3.25 millimeter needle and I used a 16 inch circumference or 16 inch circulars which are my favorite go-to for hat knitting and then once I got to the top and it got too tight for the 16 inch circulars I switched to magic loop. You could also switch to using double pointed needles if that's your preference for the very top of the crown and I cast on the adult medium size but I knit the length to a little bit past the adult large size because again I like an extra wide brim and I often wear my hair in like a clip or a bun in the back so I just need a little extra room, that slouch factor to hold all my hair in there. Because I find that when my hair is down, it's harder to wear a hat or have it be uh, well fitted unless I knit a smaller size just so it's more snug because also I've got these glasses, okay? And I always wear glasses because I have to, otherwise I can't see and they push hats out. 
Um, any other glasses wearers may may be able to commiserate with that. And then wind gets in. It is so annoying. So I tend to like my hats a little more on the snug side so that it just cinches in a little bit. So this is an adult medium. It fits really well. I might try for my next one for myself to cast on the adult small and again knit it extra long because now it's going to stretch more and if it stretches more then you lose that length, right? So I'm going to want to maybe knit at least an extra inch which I'll be able to because I cast on a smaller size which means I'll have more yardage to be able to keep going um, in length, right? So that's what I'm going to do for the next one, I think, and we'll see what happens. But I don't know if I have anything else to say about this. I did match gauge in the pattern, which is 32 stitches by 33 rows and four inches of the one by one ribbing. I knit 85 crowns. 85 crowns, 85 rounds before starting the crown section. And as I had mentioned before, the crown section takes anywhere from like 16 to 17 grams for the adult medium size for how I'm knitting it. Everybody's yardage may vary, so if you're not interested in playing yarn chicken, maybe reserve 20 grams for the crown section. I don't think I've ever used more than 17 grams. I think I've even used like 15 grams before. And honestly, like if you get to the end and you just like run out of yarn, I would just loop through the rest of your stitches and pull tight and call it a day and don't worry about it. If it's like really at the beginning of the crown, maybe don't do that. But if you're like just a few rounds shy of finishing and you run out of yarn, I would just pull through the threads and tie it and weave it in that end and don't worry. The next project I'd like to share with you today is a long-term project. I started this June 1st, 2023, and I told myself, let's try to aim for six months for finishing it. Well, I lost some steam on it, and then I was like, you know what? This is getting really big. <laughs> so let me tell you what this project is. This is my half and half triangles wrap number seven maybe? This is also a free pattern by Pearl Soho and it is definitely a project that I recommend going into knowing it's going to be a long-term project and knowing that it is also something that you can pick up and put down whenever. Also, I feel like I always add this disclaimer but since I haven't shown this project in months I'm going to insert that disclaimer again. Sorry, not sorry. <laughs> it is that even if you see or think you see a bunch of people knitting it, please don't feel like you have to knit it. Actually, you know what? I'm not even gonna tell you please because I'm not gonna tell you how to feel or not feel. I am just putting it out there into the universe that there are thousands of patterns for all different types of makers and I just don't feel like people should feel like they have to make whatever everybody else is making because that's just silly. So, if you don't like knitting a sea of garter, don't make this one. <laughs> because it is a sea of garter. If you enjoy knitting just back and forth knit stitches with the only thing you have to pay attention to is a wrap and turn or a German short row double stitch thing, then maybe this one is for you. So for me, it's been so nice because it is a project I don't have to keep referring to a pattern for. I can just pick up a put down whenever. It is next to my bed so that when the kids are getting ready for bed and they're taking their long sweet time to get ready for bed, I have something I can be doing while I'm parenting and it just makes the process so much easier for everybody. <laughs> And so this has gone through many bedtimes, this has gone through quiet mornings, this has gone through playing games with my kids next to a fireplace, this has been knitting outside at a playground. So many great moments knit into this. Now, disclaimer here. <laughs> I made a big modification for this one. So all my other ones I have made some modifications to and I'm actually thinking about doing kind of like a roundup video of all the half and half triangles wraps that I have made. A to show you the color combinations and B to just like kind of go over a little bit of difference as to each one that I've done and yeah so I'm thinking about doing that. I will first tell you about this one today though. So this one <laughs> is just one triangle. So maybe it can't be called a half and half triangles wrap, maybe it's just called a half triangles wrap, or maybe a half square wrap, or just a triangle wrap. In any case, it is just one half of the half and half triangles wrap. And you'll see I have multiple colors here. 
And in the pattern, it is written for one side to be one color and the other side to be one color. And I had decided that wasn't what I was doing this time. And so pattern uses US 3 or 3.25 millimeter needles. I decided I wanted an airier fabric for this one. So I cast on using a size 4, which is a, uh, I don't remember what that is, 3.5 millimeter needle. And I cast on 260 stitches. If you are curious as to what the original pattern is, I recommend going to the website and reading it. It is like one page long, maybe less than a page long, so I'm not gonna go over all of the like things that are in the actual pattern. Um, I've talked about it many, many, many times here, so I just recommend you doing that research yourself. But I will tell you what I did here. So I cast on 260 stitches with a US4, and the first color I'm using here is peony pink and this is the yarn uh, linen quill by Pearl Soho. It comes in 439 yards for 100 grams, 35% alpaca, 15% linen, 50% fine highland wool. So it's a fingering weight yarn. It is not super wash. The softness I think is soft but the softness level I feel like is subjective, so some people find it soft, some people don't. There are kind of long hairs sticking out on it, so if that's something that would bother you, then maybe this is not the best yarn for you. The linen doesn't take the dye the same way, so on the darker colors you'll see more of a heathered appearance with the linen fibers showing through, and it's not as visible on the light, um, lighter colors. So I have peony pink as this pale peachy pink, Dark Denim as this navy blue, raw sienna as this kind of yellow ochre raw sienna color, bright flamingo which is this like neon peachy coral, and then I went back to peony pink. So when I started I knit, where is my cast on edge, okay here, this is my cast on edge so you start with all the stitches that you are going to cast on in the beginning. And then I did, I think 60, I turned 60 stitches. So I used German short rows instead of wrap and turns. I will include a video link in the description box below on how I do those uh, modifications. And then I did 60, so I turned 60 stitches and then I turned, I think 20 stitches. Did I do 20? I think I did 20. Yeah, 20 stitches in the Bright Flamingo. And then I turned 20 stitches on the raw sienna, and then I turned 20 stitches on the dark denim, and then I just knit until I got all stitches turned for the rest of it, and then I resolved all my double stitches, and then I bound off. So I was going to do an I-cord bind off, but my heart wasn't in it, and it was looking kind of messy, and so I took that out and then I didn't get very far before I decided it wasn't going to work and then I just um, bound off knit wise I think but then initially the uh, the double pointed needle that I was using to bind off I felt like it was too small so my bind off was too tight so then I kept switching and getting bigger and bigger until I felt like it was loose enough so I think I ended up using a US 7 to bind off but honestly I probably should have just used a US 8 from the beginning so that it was nice and stretchy so then when I blocked it, I just made sure to like really stretch out <laughs> this bind off to be super straight. And it's pretty, um, I would say it's not stretchy at all. It is very tight. So it doesn't bother me when I'm wearing it, um, like draped over my shoulders or around my neck. I feel like that bind off is just fine. And I guess if I wanted it to look any different, I could just pick off, pick up the stitches I bound off and then do an I-cord along that edge. But honestly, I think it looks very nice. I like, I like how tidy that is. And I like how it looks with these um, lines. Do you see the lines here? So that's actually on the right side. It's showing these little lines. And, oh, you know what? I didn't even mention what I called this. So. I feel like I'm a little all over the place, sorry. This half and half triangles wrap, I named Love Letters from the very beginning. I name all of my projects, all of my half and half triangles wrap projects. And so this one's called Love Letters. And something that I really like about the, how the lines show up is that they remind me of like when you're writing and you go dot, dot, dot at the end. 
and it also makes me think of lined paper. So, oh there, now you can see the, the little dashes better. And that just came from resolving the double stitches and then binding off. So I really like how that looks. I think that looks really cool. And then this is technically the wrong side of the wrap. And again, you can see the lines there. It's just from Knitting Garter and how that reverse side looks, but I really like it. I think it looks like, you know, the dot, dot, dot and lined paper. So I feel like I can wear this on either side. I wove in my ends pretty carefully so that it's not super noticeable where I wove in my ends. And I just really like it. So it's this gigantic triangle. I can wear it over my shoulders as is, or I can fold it in half and then wear it more like a cowl or scarf and just tuck the ends in and I can play with it a little to get the colors to show as I want them to and it can still cover the back of my neck and be plenty cozy. And maybe I should share how much yarn I ended up using. For the peony pink, I used 187 grams. Bright Flamingo, I used about 28 grams. Raw Sienna, I used about 26 grams. And Dark Denim, I used about 24 grams. So if you'd like to do something similar, those are my estimates. Well, those are not my estimates. I weighed them, so those are like the actual weights, but those are estimates for you to play around with if you wanted to do something similar and you have linen quill yarn remaining from previous projects. And maybe you have less than the amounts that I mentioned. So you could just knit until you ran out for each color block section and then just add on another color if that's what you wanted to do. So I am super pleased with how this turned out. I really like the color combination. I feel like it gives it kind of a modern but fun whimsical look to it. I feel like it's the way the blocking of the color stripes are but also the color combination that makes it look really cozy but also vibrant and fun and festive and easy to kind of match with anything. Right now I have on jeans so I feel like the dark denim works really well with that. I'm not sure if I'm standing up too high to see that. Maybe if I hold it down this way. There yeah, maybe. Is that visible? I'm not sure. And then the bright color is really nice because in the winter it can be really gray. So just having that pop of bright is nice. I love this raw sienna color. I feel like it's a really nice neutral that just warms everything up. And then the peony pink keeps things light. So super happy with how this turned out. Okay, on to my third finished project. We are going to talk about, take this off here, my new sweater. Oh, it's so lovely. Okay, there, I'm back up a little so you can see the whole thing. This is the Ranunculus by Midori Hirose. This is my fifth Ranunculus. I just love how this pattern knits up. The process is enjoyable. The final product is enjoyable. And I have made several modifications to all of the ones I've made. I'm also thinking about making a video on all five versions of my ranunculi. And I think that could be a fun way to show how each one is really its own. And I used different yarns for each one and different modifications and different different ways of wearing them. They have different purposes. They serve different purposes and I really wanted a wintry one, a really warm, cozy, wintry, long sleeve, long, full length body one and this is it. So I used the yarn Yonder. It is a new base offered by Pearl Soho. It is Aran weight at 140 yards for 100 grams. And it is, let me see if I have a tag here. Uh, here we go. It is 50% alpaca and 50% highland wool. It is not a superwash yarn. 
And the colorway I used is Smoky Mauve. And it is so soft and drapey. And it feels, it feels very round knitting with it. And it has great stitch definition for a nice textured yoke for the lace and the texture sections to really be showcased. And I feel like this yarn has a nice heathering to it and it's more visible up close to see the subtle color shifts. But this smoky mauve color is like a, um, I would say a lavender hued gray. And because I used an Aran weight to knit this pattern, it is not super gapy or holy because I feel like in the original pattern, the gauge is, I wanna say 14 or 15 stitches. I should pull it up. I knitted at 15 stitches for four inches, but I wanna say the original pattern is 14 stitches maybe. Uh, let's pull it up here. And with that big of a gauge, it really allows you to use a variety of yarn to achieve a variety of different fabric densities. And I have done that with a lot of my different um, sweaters for this. And let's see here, yeah, 14 stitches. And the recommended needle size is a US 10 or six millimeter. I used a US nine because that's the fabric I wanted. And for the ribbing, I used a US seven. For the neckline, I used the US nine as well, but the rest of it, I used a US seven. And this is a paid for pattern. So the details I'm going to share with you are ones that don't give away information from the pattern, but I'm not going to give you like specific stitch counts of anything because that would be in the paid for pattern. So for the neckline, I changed it up. I used, so I used the US nine to cast on with the stitch count in the pattern. And then I just used an old Norwegian cast on. That's what I chose. That's my mod for that. And then I went into the ribbing. Now for the short row shaping in the back, I followed that as well, but I knit an extra set of short rows because I just wanna make sure I have plenty of coverage back here on my neck. I don't like a cold neck. <laughs> and so that's the change I did there. And then I omitted the short rows that are done in the front section. I just like the look of this crew neck better. I feel like when there's the short rows in the back and the front, you end up with more of a boat neck effect because it also lifts the front. And I don't want it to lift the front. I want only the back um, to have that extra fabric. I don't want it in the front. So I just omitted it and just went right into the textured yoke section after completing the short row shaping in the back. And then I followed numbers for size one, which in the pattern gives a finished circumference of 46 inches. Because my gauge is a little bit different, I ended up closer to 43 or 40, somewhere between 43 or 44 inches, which gives me about 11 inches of positive ease, which is plenty of ease. And with a pattern, I mean, with a yarn, that ends up being so drapey, I feel like that amount of positive ease is okay because it doesn't create like a stiff boxy um, silhouette. It just creates this nice drapey, oversized, cozy look. And it that extra positive ease just doesn't end up looking as big, I guess. And I just did straight down, didn't do any way shaping. And then I wanted it to go past my high hip. so. Let's see, how am I going to show this? My hip is here, and I went several inches past that. Now my reasoning for this is that when I raise my arms, I don't want my hem to go past the top of my jeans. So it is just there. So what I did is I tried it on as I was knitting it, and would raise my arm and see how many more inches I needed to go. And so that's how I figured it out. I also have long, arms compared to the body circumference size that I would pick for sweaters in general. And so I feel like I usually need to add a couple of inches to the sleeves to get to the length that I want. Plus, okay, sorry, I'm like half in frame here by sitting on my feet. Let me get situated here. So then when you also bend your arms on long sleeve sweaters, the elbow ends up getting kind of slouchy which eats up 
some of the sweater sleeve length. So I feel like I always need to knit a little longer than I think I will to get to the length that I want. But this is perfect. I wanted it to get to my wrists so that also when I stick my arms out, it isn't going to like ride up to three quarter length sleeves, which would really bother me. And it hits right, right kind of where my watch is after being worn for a while. Right after blocking, I would say it definitely covered my wrists and went a little bit farther, but just with wear and again, bending arms, it ends up riding up just a little bit. So I feel like it is at a perfect length. When I am standing with my arms at my sides, it does cover my watch, which is what I like, and it is at a really nice length, but it doesn't go past where my hand starts. So it's perfect length for me. I did do some sleeve shaping. So I knit it with zero decreases all the way until the elbow, which generally is what works for me. And then I started decreasing, I think every, every 10 rounds, I think I did two decreases and then went all the way down to the cuff. And then I, I don't think I did like any additional decreases before the cuff. I just switched to the ribbing needles, which I used a US 7 and then I did the ribbing and then bound off in pattern. And I just love how this wears. It is just what I wanted. I wanted this cozy sigh. I talked about it in I think the previous episode. I wanted something that would feel like a hug, a comforting sigh that I could just throw on at any time. And I have worn it several times. I've not noticed any significant pilling or anything since I started wearing it. So, so far we're good. I feel like some yarns feel like they are going to pill like the moment you sneeze <laughs> but this one so far is good it's very soft but yet it's not pilling like in the underarms or anywhere with more friction yet again i've only just finished it like a week or so ago and i've worn it a few times but it's definitely not gone through like any test of hard wearing yet but so far i really like it i would say Caution when you're blocking it. So when it's like waterlogged and you're gonna pull it out of the sink or something, it can really stretch out. So I would just be very careful, like kind of squeeze out the water. I like to lay it between towels, roll it up, press on it, step on it, squeeze out the water before laying it out to dry. But just caution if it's like waterlogged, when you pull it out, it's going to get all stretched out. So just be careful with that. And I used a total of six, no, that's not right. I used a total of 545 grams for my sweater and again full length sleeves, full length body, followed size one but slightly smaller in the finished circumference because my gauge was slightly um, denser, slightly denser than the pattern because I did 15 stitches for four inches instead of 14 stitches for four inches and I, I'm so pleased with it. It is so comfortable. The neckline is just right in that crew, crew neck um, fit and the sleeves are just right. And it's amazing that when we make our own sweaters that we can make them fit just the way we want them to. And it's so satisfying to be able to do that. Okay, we are going to go into some sewing projects. Now, these are all project bags that I've made for personal use and I don't follow a specific pattern. And there are tons of free tutorials and patterns out there on the internet. And if you need in-person help, I recommend going to your local sewing shop to ask for help, maybe call them and give them a heads up to see if they do something like that. Or if they have classes, a lot of times these sewing shops, fabric stores will offer classes that are paid for or sometimes free for you to stop in. Some places even have like sewing groups that you can ask questions and things like that. So I am not the place for that. I do this for personal use and I've been sewing since I was a little kid. My mom sews, my grandma sews, and it is just literally part of my blood. <laughs> and yeah, I just find a lot of enjoyment into the freedom of creating and not necessarily following a specific pattern and then that also means I can use whatever cuts of fabric I have on hand or I don't know just do whatever I want so that is what I'm going to show you are bags that I've made because I felt like it let's start with maybe should we start with okay I'll start with this one Oh, it's so fun and fits the mood. We have these woodland creatures. And if you are curious about fabrics and things like that, I have a Maker Musings video here on my channel that I'll link to that talk about my thought process and where I get fabrics and stuff, but I get them all over the place. This specific one I got at Joanne Fabrics 
and they had a sale on their canvas and this is a more of a lightweight canvas it's definitely not crunchy but it gives good uh, structure and then I do use fusible fleece interfacing which gives it extra extra structure and squishiness and so I did a boxed bottom for this one and I have cotton webbing handles and then I did something fun on top which is nice because then the entire tote bag doesn't scrunch in and you lose like three inches of space on top. So I don't know what this is called, but you can search like drawstring tote bag or something and then some of them will show up with this extra, I don't think it's quite a lining. I'm not sure exactly what it's called, but this extra drawstring part on top. And it can be folded over on the inside or the outside. And I also did a canvas on the inside. I'll show you what's inside of this project uh, bag in a bit because it's a work in progress. But I just love how this turned out. It is a great size for a sweater. And then, of course, I had to make another one. So this one is a super fun fabric. It's just whimsical and kind of holiday-y, but not like in-your-face holiday-y. So you've got these birds on there that look like they're block printed and they are wearing crowns and the crowns mimic the flowers that are goldish mustard color. So the backgrounds are very light pink and then you've got black and gold and then I decided I wanted a maroon boxed bottom. The sizing of this, I think I ended up doing it pretty similar to the other one. It's pretty close. And then I wanted to do this top drawstring again. Now, I think I did this one first and I feel like I didn't make this drawstring part deep enough so that when I cinch it, it kind of pulls a little bit on the sides, so I made the second one uh, deeper or wider, I don't know which direction that would be, so that it would sit in the bag better and it wouldn't pull at all on the top. So this one does maybe pull a little bit because it's not as, I guess it's too shallow, it's not deep enough, I don't know, I don't know how to say it. But this one I also used a canvas lining, I used this coral peachy pink which I think is super fun with all these different pinks and reds. And I have a coordinating bag in here. Oops, it's holding yarn, so we're gonna try to be careful with that. And this one I just did like a little drawstring pouch with the yarn, or not the yarn, the fabric that I had remaining from what I had purchased. I try to use up all the fabric I can and try to buy only what I need, which sometimes is like a quarter yard or a third of a yard or half a yard or sometimes a full yard, but that way, when I'm done with the projects, I'm like done, right? And so with however much I bought, I don't remember how much this is. Is this 12 inches? This looks like it's about 12 inches. I can get two bags, so that's really fun. Of course, there's other coordinating fabric, so it's not, I'm not making like a total of two bags with only that fabric. That's just like my accent fabric, I guess, my feature fabric. So this one's super cute. It has two things of yarn in there right now and it just keeps things from getting all tangled up. It's also perfect for like a hat or mittens or socks. So these two go together. And again, I'll show you what's inside later. Those those are two big ones. Oh, here's the little coordinating bag I made with the woodland creatures. And I wanted it a little bit wider, so I added this beautiful evergreen woodsy fabric to it on the side and this one has like a lavender drawstring and the inside is a pink and this one also has a work in progress in it so you'll see that in a bit but I just love the deer and the hedgehogs and the birds and the flowers oh it's so lovely I was feeling super holiday-ish after putting up our Christmas tree and I sewed up this glittery, I'm not sure if the glitter is going to show up, but there's silver glitter on the fabric, which I'm hoping does not get everywhere. But there's these super cute gingerbread houses. I love pink and red together. I feel like this gives like a holiday vibe without being that super bright red and green. So this one, there's some needle stuff sticking out, but I'm going to show you the full effect. Oh, it's so cute. It's like this little parcel gift. I love how it scrunches on top. I think it's so much fun. The way you do those is that basically, well, you can look it up, but basically you're gonna create a drawstring channel in this main fabric, outer main fabric. You can see my pencil lines here that I drew for that one inch channel. But yes, so basically you do a drawstring channel on the outside instead of adding another one on the top. 
and there's lots of tutorials out there for that, so you can look for that. And I'm not sure what you would call this scrunchy top drawstring bag, but if you just even type in DIY or drawstring bag tutorial or something, there are options for ones that come up with the ones like this versus the ones that don't have the scrunchy top. So I just really like how this looks like a present. I think it's so cute. So, so, so cute. We are done with finished projects and now we are on to the works in progress section. As you can see, there are several works in progress to share with you. This is a classic ribbed hat that I'm knitting for my husband. So now that I have mine done and I had him try it on, I know what size to knit for him. He, his head circumference is bigger than mine, but he also likes his hats very snug and he has less hair than I do. And so it takes up less room. So he also likes the adult medium. So that is what I am casting on for him. And the colorway I am using is True Turquoise. Here is the tag on the screen. I am using the Cashmere Merino Bloom. He said it's super soft and really nice and he totally deserves a really nice hat. And so this one is True Turquoise. I, <laughs> I was going through the hat bin and realized he has another hat that's very similar in color out of Farmer's Daughter Fibers yarn. But hey, you like what you like, right? So here is the yarn. It is a lovely bright turquoise blue color. And I have just started. So here we are. It is knit bottom up. And so I just have like maybe six rounds in. I have a progress keeper on here that is an older one by Maria of Woolen Forest or Forest Charm. Forest Charm is her Etsy shop name. I'm trying to get it to flip over. There's like a turquoise bead on it and then etchings of trees. Not sure if it's showing up very well. And then the stitch marker here. I believe this is Amazonite bead. I might be wrong. And then I have these light bulb stitch markers on here so that I can mark every 10 rounds. That way I know when I am up to 85 rounds and then I will start the crown. So that is that. I keep this project in my purse for when I'm waiting for the kids for whatever and I'm just sitting in the car. It is easy knitting that I can pick up and put down whenever and so for the kids various practices, lessons, or whatever the case may be, it is just something I can keep in my purse and just work on whenever. Ideally, I would have it done by Christmas so that he can wear it for the winter season, but I'm in no like hurried deadline. I feel like that's the case for most of these projects here. It'd be great to finish them all in December, and some of them are smaller than other projects, but, oh wait, nope, I lied. Two of the projects I'd like to just finish in the springtime. The rest of them I would like to finish in December. I think. <laughs> Something like that. Anyway, moving on. Second project. Hmm, what's in this? Oh, I know what's in this. Okay, actually, yeah, we'll go to this big bag next, okay? This one is a sweater I am knitting for myself. It is the Chalet Days Pullover by Samantha Guerin. And I've had this pattern for a little bit now and I've been really itching to cast it on but just didn't make time for it. And now I've cast on and I'm so excited. It is a worsted weight sweater. And I am using, for my main color, Knit Picks Wool of the Andes. It's a non-superwash worsted weight yarn, 100% Peruvian Highland wool. It comes in 50 gram skeins that you do not have to wind. I tend to wind it anyway because otherwise it's like flopping around in my bag and I don't like center pulling because it just makes a mess at the end. And this comes in 110 yards for 50 grams. The colorway I am using is Rooibos Heather and it's just this beautiful reddish brown with heathering which gives it great dimension. I love that because it is not hand dyed. I have no alternating of skeins to worry about. I basically just knit until one runs out and continue. My contrast color, because it is a color work sweater, is hand spun by a friend of mine. She was so sweet to share her hand spun with me. 
Here is the tag that she wrote so I could figure out what is what. Thank you so much, Selena. You are incredibly talented. So it's this deep teal with gold and brown. Hopefully it is not getting blown out too much here. And it is very vibrant and very colorful. Maybe if I hold it back a little bit, it's a little more accurate. And I just feel like these two colors together create a very maybe hobbity <laughs> vibe, which I am here for. And it's so cozy and so earthy and very Christmassy and holiday-ish. So this is going to be my Christmas sweater if I finish it in time. If I don't finish in time, it is, well, that's okay. <laughs> so I'm gonna show you what I've got. I'm working on the yoke portion. And the pattern does have you go back and pick up for the neckband, but I decided I didn't want to do that. So I just started with the neckband. <laughs> and because it is a worsted weight sweater, so I can see the reason for wanting to pick up the neckband later for additional structure since all the weight is hanging on that cast on edge. But because the yarns I'm using, even though they're worsted weight, they're pretty light, I decided I'm not gonna worry about that part. So it's a little scrunched up it is on slightly bigger cables but it is still a little scrunched up just the nature of a large yoke hopefully it doesn't get blown out too much but i have uh, stitch markers marking my color work repeat section so that if i mess up it's a lot easier to tell where i messed up and so here we are the contrast is coming out much brighter on screen than it is um, when it's not being blown out maybe i can adjust that i'm not really quite sure later but you will either be seeing it very blown out or not. So it is not super high contrast, and there is enough contrast though to see that there is color work there, and I just really, really like how it's turning out. I feel like the teal is a nice pop, and the golds add extra dimension in it, and it's just lovely. So that's where we're at. I'm gonna show, show you my floats on the back. I have not had to catch any floats, so that's really nice. Samantha does break it up between whether you have your main color as a darker color or your contrast color as a darker color, which I super appreciate because I'm that person that gets super confused and will just mess it up if I have the opposite of whatever the designer's sample is in. So having the option of choosing which color work chart to follow is really helpful. There are three color work charts. It's just how the motifs are sectioned out, which is actually really nice too, because then you have like mini milestones. You can be like, this week I'm doing color work chart A, next week I'm doing color work chart B, third week I'm doing color work chart C, you know, however way you want to do it. But I'm really enjoying it. I love knitting color work. I knit my color work with two hands and the contrast color I will have whole, have held, have, I will hold the contrast color in my left hand as the dominant color and the main color will be in my right hand and so yeah that's how I knit my color work and I always stretch out my stitches on my right needle as I'm knitting which gives it extra space so there's never any puckering involved and then sometimes I go up a needle size for the color work sometimes I don't I did here but I'm not sure if I really needed to especially if I'm also stretching out the stitches so we'll see how it turns out. There will definitely be no puckering because I'm doing all those things to prevent it, but sometimes I wonder if I overcompensate. Yeah, we'll, we'll see what happens. I did choose the second size in the pattern, which is a finished circumference of 36 inches, which should give me about four inches of positive ease, which is in the recommended, re recommended ease of the pattern. Chalet Days comes in nine sizes and it starts at a 32 inch finished bust circumference up to a 64 inch bust circumference and it recommends uh two to four inches of positive ease and yeah i am excited about how this one turns out i plan on knitting it to be full length so past my hip and full length sleeves and it's going to be so lovely and it's worsted weight at a gauge of 19 stitches for four inches and Depending on how much focus I put on it, I should have it done by Christmas, but we'll see what happens. <laughs> the next project I'd like to share with you is a sweater that I am knitting for our seven-year-old. So I knit one for our 10-year-old already, and I tend to knit them sweaters maybe every other year because I do knit them a little bit bigger so that they can wear them for two years. I don't think I've knit a long, like a full-length sleeve one for the younger one yet because as you may have experience with, little kids often put their arms and like elbows in things and I was not interested in like washing glue out of a wool sweater. 
And so both of my kids being very artsy craftsy, as you may imagine, uh, I just wasn't interested in knitting her a long sleeve sweater. So she had a lot of short sleeve sweaters that she could wear over, uh, thin long sleeve shirts, and she had vests. But now that she's seven, I think I will knit her a long sleeve sweater. So that is what I'm doing. That is what is in this bird bag. I am following a, I guess, recipe from the Strange Brew book by Tin Can Knits. I have had this book for several years now and I just love it. It gives you a recipe for fingering weight, DK weight, worsted weight, I think that's how far it goes up to, for top down and bottom up sweaters. And then you just plug in your numbers and figure out how you want to do it. And then if you want to knit color work, there are also color work uh, charts and things for you. I'm just going to flash it so you can see it real quick. But in here that go with the stitch counts provided for each of those sweater sizes. And it goes from zero to six months baby size all the way up to, I want to say 4XL. So it goes up to a 61 inch or 61 or 62 inch circumference. And then it gives you gauge for reference and yeah, basically everything you need to knit a sweater. So I am following a DK weight recipe to knit a sweater for our seven year old and the circumference I think should end up with about six inches of positive ease for her. And the yarns that I am using are Knit Picks Swish DK, which is 100% Superwash Merino. It's fine Superwash Merino and super, super soft. I prefer to use Superwash for my kids because of the softness factor and the washability. This yarn comes in 123 yards for 50 grams. The nice thing about it coming in 50 grams is you can order closer to exactly what you need. It also comes in skein form where you don't have to have a ball winder. I usually wind it anyway, again, because I don't like center pulling. I feel like it makes a mess. And then when I pull from the outside, it's just jostling around. So it's easier for me to pull from a cake. So that's what I'm doing. My main color is Karma Heather, which is this beautiful, um, vibrant purple. And then my contrast color is Haze Heather, which is like a lavender. And I like the heathering because I feel like it just gives it extra depth. So the Haze Heather is kind of a grayish lavender, and the Karma Heather is like a pinkish fuchsia color. And I will show you where I'm at so far. I've got a stitch marker on here from Rushma of Hello Lavender. It is a yellow rose. And then I've got a Progress Keeper on here by Yura of Nip Boop Studio, which is a fox with a star. I think it's glaring a little bit because it's shiny, but hopefully you can see it. And I decided to knit a fold over neckband because looking at some of their patterns, the neckline on all of them actually is very wide. And so I feel like my kids will end up pulling at it if it's really wide. And it's just so much cozier if it's closer in. And being a really soft yarn, I don't think they'll mind it closer in. So I knit a longer ribbing portion and then knit to my cast on edge. My cast on edge is an old Norwegian cast on, which is super stretchy. And then I knit, I think like two and a half inches of ribbing and then knit to the cast on edge and then continue the pattern from there. So I feel like it gives a great structure. Even if it stretches out some over time, I can thread an elastic through it and have it kind of be like a casing and that would work out really well. And then I have started my color work. So basically I pick how I wanna do my color work motif. And so this is what I've done so far. I really like this scalloped edging for the neckline. So that's what I did. And then I think I'm about to do my second increase round, so that's where I've stopped. So once I do that, then I will figure out what I'm gonna do next. So yeah, choose your own adventure, and I will just figure out what I'm doing. In the pattern, it has you do the short row shaping, 
after the color work yolk section and I may or may not follow the way they do their short row shaping. I've done it on the flax sweater and I think it's similar on this one. The flax is a free pattern by Tin Can Knits and that's the one I knit for our 10 year old in the fall. So I'm not sure if I want to follow that kind of German short row shaping. It's almost like a crescent. Uh, yeah, like a horizontal crescent in the back. But then I've tried short row shaping that's like mid back on a different pattern before that basically you just knit a bunch of rows flat and then that like is supposed to shift that back up and then when you go pick up your sleeve stitches you just pick up along the edging of where you increase that back portion. I might try that. I don't know. We'll see when I get there. I'll have to put in a lifeline just in case it does not work out <laughs> so that I can pull it back easier. And for those who aren't familiar, a lifeline is basically just threading another yarn or string through the last row before you start maybe something else. That way, if you need to completely rip back, it's easier to rip back than having to like tink back one stitch at a time. But that's my plan. And this one I don't plan on having done by Christmas. There's just, it's just not gonna happen, especially with so much thinking I have to do and planning as I go. And so her birthday is in March, so my plan is just to have it done by March. Speaking of makes for my kids, I have two shawls that I started for them that I plan on getting done in the spring. They love a big shawl. They say it's like wearing a hug from mommy and who could say no to that? So I have two started and I am following the half granny square shawl free pattern. One of them's more DK weight, one of them's maybe a little closer to worsted or iron weight, but I'm using all yarns that I just have on hand. This first one, I'm using an E or 3.5 millimeter crochet hook. And I just pulled out a whole bunch of leftover DK weight yarn. DK, maybe sport, maybe light worsted weight from previous projects. And here is where I'm at. Oh, it's so pretty. And I am just putting colors together as I feel like. And so it just starts here on the very top and then you just kind of work your way out. Your increases are right in the center and it ends up being a big triangle. And so I want to make it big enough that they can wear over their shoulders while they're reading and it shouldn't fall off their shoulders. So I want it big enough to have that weight to sit over their shoulders. And I just have some yarns collected in this bag here. And then as I work through it, I may have to uh, increase my bag size and go look for more yarn but I'm super excited about how this is turning out and let me show you the second one so the second one here this one I'm going to use all remaining yarns from um, Knit Picks Hawthorne uh, line which is they label it as fingering weight but I think it's closer to like a light sport weight yarn but I'm going to use all yarns from that it's at 357 yards for 100 grams and it's 80-20 super wash, um, fine highland wool, and nylon. And so, I'm gonna show you where that one is at. And the, oh, the hook I'm using is a G, which is a four millimeter for this one. And here we are. This one's super fun also. And I'm just really excited about how it's turning out. So it, this one has a little bit of speckling on top. And then it goes to some like semi-solid tonal colors. But yeah, I'm just also just joining it as I go. I'm doing Magic Knot. And there's lots of tutorials out there for man Magic Knot balls, so you can look that up. And then I'll just tuck the ends in. I don't like cutting it so close to the end, which is what you're supposed to do in a Magic Knot ball, but I just don't trust it. <laughs> and so I just leave on a little bit of the end, and then I will just weave it into like one of these stitch stitch parts so that it doesn't peek back out. But yeah, so this is where I'm at with these and I have a long way to go, but crochet works up very quickly and I, I just work on these whenever, whenever I feel like it. And I like having different projects going simultaneously because I feel like it uses your hand muscles a little bit differently, especially with needle sizes that are different sizes, projects that are different sizes. It just keeps the fingers and hands moving a little bit differently so that they don't get tired out or sore and it's just nice to have that variety. 
I have just a few more left to share with you. One of them is a set of gift knits for two little girls who are very special to me. And I am knitting them fingerless mitts for Christmas. Here is the first one. I have just scrap yarn on the thumb stitches right now. So I need to just knit the ribbing on the thumbs, really. But I'm following the World Simplest Mitten Free Pattern by Tin Can Knits and modifying it for fingerless version. And they're so cute. You cast on from the cuff. And I am knitting them DK weight, so I used US 3 or 3.25 millimeter needles for the ribbing. And then I cast on 34 stitches. I knit knit one purl one uh, ribbing for 16 rounds, which is about two inches. I think pattern says two and a half inches, but this one is for more of a toddler, but I'm using the child size, so I'm just making it slightly smaller. And then I switch to a US 5, and I knit five rounds before starting this gusset portion. The pattern might say just to do three rounds, but I feel like this section always needs a little bit more. And then for the make ones that I do in this gusset portion, I did all make one lefts. Hopefully that is showing up close. And then after the gusset, I did eight rounds of stockinette on the US 5s, and then I switched back to US 3, knit one round before I started four rounds of uh, one by one ribbing, and then I just bound off in pattern with the US 3. I didn't bother making it super loose since the hand does get narrower there, so I don't want it to like flare out. So I just did a bind off in pattern. So these are really sweet. Her favorite color is pink right now, so these ones are pink. Hopefully they'll still be pink, or her favorite color will still be pink by the time Christmas comes around. And then for her sister, I am knitting also the child size, but I will just knit it a little bit longer. And I found two um, mini skeins that I wound held together. So I, I wound them each separately, and then I split them in half. Oops, tangled here. Split them in half and then wound them together so I'm holding the fingering weight, the light fingering weight yarn double. And her favorite color right now is red, so I feel like all these reds are really fun and festive. And I just started, so I've got them on three uh, US 3 9 inch circular needles, and I have these super cute uh, progress keepers that I made. I found these charms at uh, Michael's, an arts and crafts store here in the US and they have these little speech bubbles on them and then I just added the circular lover backs. So this one says yay in red and pink and this one says BFF in blue and pink. Let me get it to turn around. So I think they're just so cute. There's more of them. It was a whole set of charms and so now I have a set of charms that are all speech bubbles and I think it's so fun. <laughs> I'm struggling with getting this to turn here, but you get the point. And if that didn't show at all, I'll just put a picture here on the screen so you can see what I'm trying to show you. But yes, I just started these and they are a very quick knit, especially since they are so small and they use like 30 grams of yarn. So I will hopefully, sorry, I'm trying to untangle here. I will hopefully have these finished up this week and get them mailed out soon. I like to get my Christmas stuff mailed out ideally by the first week of December. That way I am not stressing about things getting where they need to get on time. Mail deliveries can just get a little tricky around the holidays, so I just like to give it plenty of time so nobody is stressed out about anything getting anywhere. Last work in progress to share with you, my friends. I, so I really, really wanted to knit myself a pair of self-striping socks. I really love self-striping yarn. I have a little collection of self-striping yarn and it is just so fun and satisfying to knit with. And I had picked up yarn from Michelle of Woolens and Nosh this summer. And this colorway is called Meadow Sprite. And I caked it up. There's kind of a funny story behind this, but I'm trying to find my notes here. So this yarn is a 90% superwash targi, 
10% nylon, 3 ply, 411 yards for 100 grams. And I caked it up the way I do. I have a video linked here so you can see how I usually split up my self striping yarn. And then I started knitting with it and then I was like, why are these not coming out the same? <laughs> So I like to knit my socks in tandem, which means they're on their own needles, but I'm doing it at the same time. So I might knit 10 rounds of a cuff one day, 10 rounds of the other cuff, and then keep going so that they're always kind of playing catch up with each other. So that way when I'm done, I have a whole pair of socks, not just one sock, and feeling like I have to start all over again. Plus, this way my tension is much more even throughout the sock because I'm working on the same parts around the same time. So I have them on their own. 9 inch circulars, US 1, 2.25 millimeter needles, and I'm knitting the cuff because I like to knit my socks cuff down, and I'm thinking these stripes are not coming out the same. What is happening? Because I started both of them on this mauvey pink stripe, and I'm going to show you what it looks like because it's, it's, it's a little funny. Okay, let's see, let's get these out. Okay, are you ready? So here's one. It is so cute. It's got this mauvey pink and a brown and a cream. Now here's number two. Hmm. Mauvey pink, brown, cream, navy, scummy green, and then pink. What is happening? Before I show you what is going on here, I'm going to show you the progress keepers I have on here because they're so cute. These are by Maria. Here is a teacup and saucer, a bronze teacup and saucer. And the other one has a crescent moon and moonstone gemstone on it. And now I'm going to flash a picture from the website of Woolens and Nosh, how the Meadow Sprite colorway knits up. And as you may see, the striping is not the same throughout. <laughs> So you'll have the color sequence going, but you've got like a block or a chunk of the stripes where they are more color blocked and like bigger stripes, and then a section where they're like thinner stripes. And I didn't realize that when I was winding it, or I just forgot. And so now I have one sock starting with the thicker stripes and one sock starting with the thinner stripes, which I actually think is kind of fun. It gives it more of like a whimsical effect and I'm, I'm for that so it'll be just fine. I haven't decided for the heel if I want to insert a contrast color. I think if I put in like a hot pink that would be super fun or a gray if I wanted it a little more neutral but we'll see when I get there because I'm also going to have to figure out where in the striping sequence that's going to happen. So if it's going to be like between a big stripe or like between stripes because I'm going to have to figure it out so that they end up with the same length of leg before I start a heel. So I haven't decided on that and I haven't decided if I want to do a slip stitch heel flap and gusset or if I want to do a shadow wrap heel and yeah we'll just kind of see where I go with that. The, there is no deadline for this project but I do have other Christmas socks that I also want to cast on. So if I could finish this by the end of this month, that would be fabulous because I have more socks that I want to make. to the Eats and Reads section. I have been doing quite a bit of baking and cooking and I may not remember everything that I did in the last two weeks but hopefully I will have some video or photos showing here on the screen of things that I have been cooking or baking. Off the top of my head I know I made some milk bread and that rose beautifully and it was so delicious and great the following days toasted. Mm, so good. And I made a no knead bread that I made in the Pyrex bowls and then once you coat the bowls with butter on the inside, I put in the everything but the bagel seasoning and just kind of shook it around. 
And so then when I put the bread dough in, it would cling to the dough as the dough baked. So those came out really nice. I always worried that it would be too salty, but actually the ratio ends up being okay because when you slice it, there's just a thin crust of it on the outside, which eaten all together is just so good. And I remember we had that with like a roasted bell pepper and onion soup that I had made. Oh, now I want to eat that. Or that with like grilled cheese. Mmm, so good. So I made that. What else did I make? Recently, I tried a new to me recipe. Well, kind of new because I have made the tan ta before, which are like an egg custard from Christina Cho's cookbook. I think I made it from her cookbook. Like the little ones. Well, now I, now I forgot. I thought I did a year ago maybe, but she had a reel on Instagram that showed her making it in like a pie form. So instead of having these little individual custards, you made it into a big pie. That was super fun to try. And so I used just Dorbot pastry dough, puff pastry dough, and I lined a tart pan with it. I think I ended up going a size larger in the tart pan because I rolled my dough out bigger and it just didn't work as well in the smaller one. So I used the biggest size. I think it was a 12 inch. I don't remember. But I did the filling as written in the pattern. I strained it so it'd be smoother and it baked beautifully. My crust was a little too far over the edge so it was really hard to pop out. I had to kind of like break off part of the edging in order to get it to pop out but it popped out otherwise really easily. So I would just caution against having your pastry go too far over the edge. The recipe said to only have a little bit over the edge and I, since I rolled it out too big, I had it way over the edge. And so I would just caution against that part or you'll be like breaking off a bunch of it around the edge in order to get it out. But that was a big success and I would totally make that again. It, it was actually very easy to make and looks beautiful and was flaky and delicious. And again, hopefully there will be pictures here on the screen for you to see that yumminess. So yummy. That's all I remember right now. <laughs> I took a break between talking about all those projects to make myself a new cup of tea. I have the honey citron ginger tea in here and I had a piece of cake and it was delicious and yeah. So now we are going to move on to books that I've read recently. I will say that I have not had really great reads recently and I think I finished them. No, one of them I didn't finish. I am returning to the library today or tomorrow, but I do have some more books to pick up from the library, so we'll just see. And I feel like for me, some of it isn't necessarily the writing style. I mean, some of it is, like whether or not the writing style is what I'm looking for, but sometimes it's just based on my mood and what I feel like reading or what I don't feel like reading. So I will say, one of the books I read recently is by an author that I think has done her rounds. I think a lot of people have read books by her and I have not. So it's a new to me author. Her name is Allie Hazelwood. She writes a lot of contemporary romance fiction, I think. And I read a book that she published in 2022 called Love on the Brain. And she writes a lot of um, like STEM based, I think, uh, contemporary romance fiction. And um, I will hopefully have a picture of the cover here on the screen here. And that I do like, like being someone who has like a STEM background, I can greatly appreciate her highlighting women in the field of science and math and engineering and I value her insight on like bringing that to light. I think what it is that contemporary romance fiction is maybe just not my genre because almost every time I've read something in that genre I'm like, oh, okay, like <laughs> eye rolling, kind of cringy. Although some of it is kind of fun anyway. I don't know, it just wasn't for me. I kind of put her in the same category for me as Emily Henry's contemporary romance fiction. Like you could read it for kind of a feel good, but some of it is kind of like, really, you didn't see that coming? Or maybe they did and maybe it's fine that you see it coming, but I don't know. It has the trope of enemies to lovers, kind of only because only one of them saw themselves or saw the other as an enemy and the other one didn't. And I don't, so I don't know if that still falls under that trope. And it also has like the he falls first 
trope in there, which I don't mind. I'm okay with that. But yeah, there's a twist in it that I kind of saw coming, but maybe didn't see the extreme of it. And I feel like some of the graphic scenes were a little too much for me. I TMI. I, I didn't need to know all that. The other book that I read recently is part of a series. I don't know if it's a trilogy or longer than that, but it's The Folk of the Air by Holly Black. That's the name of the series or trilogy. And I read the first book called The Cruel Prince. And this is young adult fantasy, romance, fairies, political intrigue. It is a little bit violent. And this I enjoyed. I thought it was fun to read. It's not my favorite, maybe, but it was still enjoyable. I enjoyed the world building. I enjoyed the character development. I thought some of the characters were a little annoying, but I enjoyed seeing how the relationships play out. That being said, I am going to pick up the second book and we'll see where it goes. So I'm enjoying it enough to keep reading. I enjoyed it enough to finish it and I would like to read the next one. So we'll see where I go with that. I started a third book, but I didn't finish it, and that one's going back to the library. Bella Donna by, I think, Adeline Grace. And it's kind of, I think it is considered YA fantasy romance gothic fiction, maybe? There's a lot of death in it. In fact, one of the characters is death. And I just couldn't get into it. Uh, there's like a lot of botany stuff in it, which that part I like, but I'm just not, I'm not feeling it. I'm not feeling really connected to any of the characters. I'm only like a little bit into it, but I will not keep reading a book just for the sake of hoping it gets better. I need it to like grab me in from the beginning. So yeah, returning it. So that's where I'm at with my reads, and I do have some other ones to pick up, so we'll see where I get with those in the next couple of weeks. Are you reading anything fun right now? Do you have certain genres that you always go towards, or do you like to jump around? I jump around a bit, but in general, I really like young adult fantasy books. Some contemporary fiction I like reading, but... I just like to be immersed in different worlds and be swept off my feet and enjoy, enjoy like, enjoy the ride. So that's what I like. We made it to the end, my friends. This has been a long one. I just had a lot to share, a lot to say, and I hope that if you were able to, you were able to watch in sections just so that it wasn't too much information at once. You can do as you please. It really, you know, do whatever works for you. But I may have forgot to mention in the very beginning that there are timestamps in this video, which really does you no good to tell you at the very end of the video. But hopefully you found that out if you looked in the description box to see that there are timestamps for the different sections. Oops, sorry, I forgot to mention it. This is the food for thought section and I'm just gonna leave you with a little, a little something to think about. It's not even really homework unless you want it to be homework. My thought to impart to you today is be gentle. Be gentle to yourself, be gentle to your loved ones. There's so much going on and everybody has their own baggage and traumas and stories and in Sometimes the hustle and bustle of the holiday season, we get so caught up on our to-do lists and our should, would, could, gotta do, gotta, whatever things that I feel like sometimes we just end up way too hard on ourselves and those around us with expectations and some of time, sometimes it's arbitrary deadlines, sometimes it's, I don't know, I mean there are like real pressure things that we often just have to do and just get done, but there are other things that sometimes maybe don't have to have as much pressure put on them as we put on them. And so I, I guess I just wanna put, put it out there into the world to be gentle. It's a reminder for myself as well to take those moments to just be in whatever state of mind that I am in and 
yeah, just be and be gentle. I think I think that's that's all I've got to say. It's yeah, that that's it. <laughs> With that, cheers to being creative. I hope you are doing well, taking good care of yourselves, your loved ones, and your neighbors, and I will talk to you next time. Mm -hmm.